Hi everyone, welcome to 2011 Studies. This is part four of God shaking the heaven and the earth. Um, we looked at God avenging Israel in Judges 5, and I wanted to review some of these verses because we're trying to encapsulate everything that relates to God shaking the heaven and the earth. So Judges 5, 1, Then sang Deborah and Barak, the son of Abinoam, on that day, saying, Praise ye the Lord for the avenging of Israel, when the people willingly offered themselves, Hear, O ye kings, give ear, O ye princes, I, even I, will sing unto the Lord. I will sing praise to the Lord God of Israel. Lord, when thou went out of Seir, when thou marchest out of the field of Edom, the earth trembled, and the heavens dropped, the clouds also dropped water. There is one instance of uh, God's avenging uh, relating to uh, the avenging of Israel um, against uh, their enemies and uh, there's just different aspects to God shaking the heavens and the earth and that's what I'm seeing the more I study this. Um, there's a psalm and the psalm is repeated in 2 Samuel actually, the psalm of David and this is also in the context of uh, God shaking heaven and the earth. Um, the psalm is about uh, God's um, protection of David uh, against Saul and the pursuing of Saul. And so let's read this. Um, I'm going to actually read a lot of this in 2 Samuel because of the language there. And uh, it, it does definitely relate to what I believe, uh, what we discovered recently, is that we are in the second year of Darius as far as the anniversary of it. Uh, following that same timeline. And what that means, certain months within the second year of Darius, uh, God does certain things. He commands us to work, to be strong. There's In certain months there's a different aspect it seems. And uh, it was presented in one month, uh, yet a little while, and I will shake the heavens and the earth. And it's presented again in the ninth month. Now the ninth month relates to our December of uh, 2012. So this is pretty exciting stuff. I mean, we're gonna um, pretty much somehow see if this timeline is accurate uh, by this information coming forth from God's word. So let's read. Uh, and then we also are gonna touch a little bit on the 11th month in this study. And it's extremely important to see that there comes a time when Satan is rebuked and his accusing uh, there's a counter to that and as the accuser of the brethren and this is important to see too uh, in an upcoming month very shortly see second Samuel 22 1 and David spake unto the Lord the words of this song in the day that the Lord had delivered him out of the hands of all his enemies and out of the hand of Saul and he said the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer the God of my rock in him will I trust he is my shield the horn of my salvation my high tower and my refuge my Savior thou savest me from violence I will call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised so shall I be saved from mine enemies when the waves of death encompass me I'm sorry when the waves of death compass me the floods of the ungodly men made me afraid the sorrows of hell compassed me about the snares of death prevented me in my distress I called upon the Lord and he and cried unto my God and he heard my voice out of his temple and my cry did enter into his ears now this is 2 Samuel 22 8 this is after David in his distress calls out to the Lord then the earth shook and trembled and the foundations of the heavens and the foundations of heaven moved and shook because he was wroth there went up a smoke out of his nostrils and a fire out of his mouth devoured and the fire out of his mouth devoured coals were kindled by it he bowed the heavens or bowed the heavens also and came down and darkness was under his feet and he rode upon a cherub and did fly 
and he was seen upon the wings of the wind. This is 2 Samuel 22, 12. And he made dark and he made darkness pavilions round about him, dark waters and thick clouds of the skies. Through the brightness before him were coals of fire kindled. The Lord thundereth from heaven, and the Most High uttered his voice. And he sent out arrows and scattered them, lightnings, and discomfited them. And the channels of the sea appeared. The foundations of the world were discovered at the rebuking of the Lord, at the blast of the breath of his nostrils. He sent from above. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them that hated me, for they were too strong for me. Now, Second Samuel 22 goes on to say how David's enemies were delivered unto him and God gave him the neck of his enemies and that he may destroy those that hated him. And this is God, again, avenging his people, um, which is really good news because, you know, the, the believers in Christ have spent time <clears throat> enduring a lot um, of the mocking and all that that w went on um, with the year 2011, uh, those who are proclaiming that Christ is coming. So this, this is, I believe, is very related because once we e exited out of that year, there is a certain time frame where there's a lull period and then this rebuilding process starts again. And it's within the years of Darius, once the kingdom was removed from Belshazzar, um, when he saw the writing on the wall. When we enter into the years of Darius, there is some great promises uh, within God's word. And we, I believe there's a seven year period from 2011 to 2018 and each year is is special for a certain reason the second year of Darius God is commanding us to work he's commanding us to be strong and he is with us and then you go on uh, you learn a, bit, a little bit more about the fourth year and then the temple is completed finally in the sixth year so which would be about 2017 but I still believe it'll go on uh, to 2018 for a, a few reasons but we're not going to talk about that for a while um, the most we're going to get to today, I think I'm going to touch on the 11th month because um, that's rapidly approaching too. I mean, we're entering, you know, the ninth month in December. So just add a couple more months and we'll be there fairly shortly. Um, let's see, um, the context of God shaking the heavens and the earth and avenging is very much a part of this language. Uh, so I'm going to read a little bit more in 2 Samuel here um, to show that it's God's avenging. 2 Samuel 22:47. The Lord liveth, and blessed be my rock, and exalted be the God of the rock of my salvation. It is God that avengeth me, that bringeth down the people under me, that bringeth me forth from mine enemies. Thou also hast lifted me up on high above them that rose up against me. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. Therefore, I will give thanks unto thee, O Lord, among the heathen, and I will sing praises unto thy name. He is the tower of salvation for his king, and, showed, and showeth mercy to his anointed, unto David, and to his seed forevermore. Now this is, there's dimensions to this. There's, you know, this psalm that's repeated in Second Samuel 22, so great because it's it's referring to King David at one point in history and we know who uh, the Christ is in the line of David and we know that Christ is the king so we know that um, a lot of this language can apply to Christ uh, as his enemies came up upon him um, and did all that in, in David's case it was his enemies and then Saul pursuing so we see a dual application actually it's more than a dual application <laughs> because you have you have King David, then you have Christ, and then at the end you have the believers in Christ who are very associated with you know drinking of the cup and enduring uh, for His name's sake. So it applies uh, in three times in history, and what is so 
fascinating to me is this language of shaking the heaven and the earth because I'm seeing that there is an avenging process and that has everything to do with God shaking the heaven and the earth at the same time it has everything to do with God saving and a rebuilding the 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 uh, there's a the building process of the house of God the eternal house of God where salvation happens worldwide the glory of that house will be greater than the former obviously because it's made of people worldwide and Christ's spirit saving people so that glory is greater because it's, it's it's an eternal greatness and it won't be ever be destroyed never be destroyed um, now where where you can find the same similar um, language is in 2nd Samuel uh, 2247 um, oh I'm sorry but it's repeated in in Psalm 18 actually it's originally in Psalm 18 repeated in 2nd Samuel so you have uh, let's see there's another shaking of the mountains mentioned in Psalm 46 but if you're doing a comparison what you're going to look up in your concordance online whatever is 2 Samuel 22, 40, uh, 22 read the whole thing and then you can go to Psalm 18 and read the similar language there it's identical but it's um, it's good to sort of read it twice because you get this this uh, real emphasis on, on God's avenging and that's a key to shaking the heavens and the earth now the the shaking of the mountains mentioned in Psalm 46 um, that's an incredible promise too uh, the earth be moved you know there's language of, of this um, disruption going on yet God says fear not to his people he's we're commanded not to fear this Psalm 46 because through the though the earth be moved though the mountain shake at the swelling thereof and the mountains swelling I looked that word up and it it can be translated as haughtiness uh, pride haughtiness though the waters of the sea sea roar the waters of the seas roar um, and you can look in Matthew 24 when Christ was prophesying about the end or declaring the end he says the seas and the waves roaring um, I think that could be part of that yet God's people will not fear during a time of tribulation um, now Psalm 46 starts with um, a very present help in trouble that word trouble is sara and that's has everything to do with tribulation trouble tribulation distress affliction uh, adversary all the same so this is Psalm 46 1 to the chief musician for the sons of Korah a song upon Alamoth God is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble there's that word sara therefore will not we fear though the earth be removed though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea though the waters thereof roar and be troubled though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof the swelling again can be translated as haughtiness um, Selah Psalm 46 4 there is a river the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High God is in the midst of her she shall not be moved God shall help her and that right early the heathen, the heathen rage the, the kingdoms <clears throat> the nations rage the kingdoms were moved he uttered his voice the earth melted the Lord of hosts is with us the God of Jacob is our refuge Selah this is Psalm 46 8 come behold the works of the Lord what desolations he hath made in the earth he maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth he breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder he burneth the chariot in fire Psalm 46 I love this passage 46:10 Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen, among the nations. 
I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Now here's a passage. We're speaking of God shaking the heavens and the earth. God shakes, then he heals. O God, thou hast cast us off, thou hast scattered us, thou hast been displeased. O turn thyself to us again. Psalm 62. Psalm 60 dot dot two. <laughs> uh, see, thou hast made the earth to tremble. Thou hast broken it. Heal the breaches thereof, for it shaketh. Okay. God shakes, then he heals. This is, again, in the context of God shaking the heaven and the earth. But then there's a healing process after that. Let's see. O God, thou hast cast us off. Thou hast scattered us. Thou hast been displeased. O turn thyself to us again. Psalm 60, 2. Verse 2, Thou has made the earth to tremble, thou has broken it. Heal the breaches thereof, for it shaketh. Okay, that's, that's one aspect. I want to mention something here, too, that... You know, this channel has been established, this YouTube channel, um, to lift up God's name and to, to show what he's going to do in in the upcoming years um, because there was a lot of um, un unanswered questions uh, when we passed uh, 2011 um, from studying these things prior to that um, I had I had known that there's a, a time of rebuilding uh, after the 8400 days but what I didn't know is how long at that point I was looking at it within 153 days. You know, that was a really quick um, time of rebuilding at, when I wrote the book Countdown. But then again, God's Word does say um, he, he will finish the work. That short work that God performs could have been done in that period of time. But we learn further, and when we're learning more now, we're learning about the years of Darius how the Medes and the Persians over, overtook the kingdom by God's hand. He's the one who raises up kings and removes them. Uh, King Cyrus and, and Darius. We're in the second year of Darius and we're progressing along here. And this channel has been set up to show uh, that God is long-suffering. God's mercy is seen, but His power will be seen too. And I'm excited about this because we the, this world has gone so far away from what the glory that God deserves. I mean, as far as the world, you know, praising God and what He's done, He's given us all life, and this whole world is is in, in that sense turned their back on God, and I think this judgment process that is coming is going to be the type of shaking and the type of waking up that this world needs. And I think many nations, like the Bible proclaims, many nations will come to him. Uh, a lot of people will understand more and more as this goes on. And um, this channel is, is really an awesome responsibility because, you know, i got to be careful um, not to inject my own thoughts in, into these studies and, and present them uh, humbly enough to uh, present them in, this, in the in the light that okay we're looking at this and we, when we see you know some stuff happening down the road maybe this is why and this language is why I believe this is accurate as far as the years of Darius and um, we're going to be seeing. Um, you know, if this is spiritual language, we're going to be seeing some aspect of that. I don't know what at this point. But it's important that um, through all the shaking, through all the, what God will do, He is our refuge. He is our refuge and He's our strength in all this. And we thank Him for His Word because His Word illuminates our path as we walk down and we see, oh, okay, this is where we're going. This is the end we see the end in sight, um, Christ coming in glory and, and great power and great glory. 
but we have to go through this process of time uh, prior to that. So, you know, and I think the world sometimes looks at believers and in, a, in the wrong light because they, they're looking at it like, oh, they're, they think they're so righteous or whatever. Every believer in Christ should be proclaiming, I am a sinner saved by God's grace and God's grace alone. There is nothing of myself that saved me. There's no, no greatness about me to where I all of a sudden decided to turn to God. If you do not, if you are not drawn by God's Spirit, you're going to re, re, you'd remain like Lazarus in the tomb. You'd be in the tomb. You would not come forth. It's only that calling of Christ to come forth that you will stand up and be resurrected, have a new a resurrected soul. That's so important to see because I think a, a lot of this activity of the world mocking is it's be, probably because a lot of it um, they see some hypocrisy going on of um, you know people proclaiming stuff and, and, and yet believers fall and they sin we all fall in sin and we all we, Christ helps us back up again we, we continue on the, there's a certain hypocrisy in the houses of God who were this lifting of themselves to be righteous and to be it's very similar to the scribes and the Pharisees of Christ's day the religious leaders of Christ's day um, their, their self-righteousness is what Christ loathed he did not he approached it I mean at the same time he ate with sinners Christ came for sinners news to the world <laughs> Christ came for sinners at, and another day he he was addressing very sternly the religious leaders of that day. So it's important to see that whole um, two-sided coin where Christ ate with sinners and yet he, he addressed very sternly the religious leaders of his day and their self-righteousness. And I think when the world maybe can look at that self-righteousness and get turned off by it, but, with, but you have to understand if anybody's viewing this from uh, maybe a world standpoint and looking at believers, we are sinners. We admit we're sinners, and uh, it's by Christ's grace and His mercy that we understand these things in God's Word, and we're able to proclaim them uh, to a world that desperately needs their sins covered by Christ. So I wanted to say that because we're we approach this time where it, it's been a little bit difficult for believers because of the accuser of the brethren. Satan does work through people. Absolutely convinced of that. You know, Peter, in his in example, when he was by the fire and they were accusing him, and prior to that, uh, Christ had told him that Satan desired to sift you like wheat. Um, and Christ allowed him to do that. But he says, when you recover, strengthen the brethren. But when he's by, he was by the fire, and they said, you're one of his, you're one of his disciples, and he denied him three times. That type of a, a, an attack, an assault, um, accusing, um, is very characteristic of what Satan does as he works through people. So, I mean, some of you may experience that. I've experienced that, and it's, uh, it's great to see that God is going to reverse things shortly. And... Uh, you know, whether we see that major um, reversal in 2015 as the glory of Moab will be contemned, the glory of the houses of God will be brought low, uh, or even now in the second year of Darius, there's some language about the shaking of the heaven and the earth relating to avenging. And uh, that's exciting because we're going to see, you know, something happen. Let's see, the second year of Darius is the ninth in the ninth month is our December so we're gonna read Haggai 2 again because this language is important then we're gonna jump into Zechariah and there's some exciting stuff in Zechariah I'm very fascinating with that book very fascinated with the language of the Zechariah all, yeah, all the way down to 14 Haggai 2 is the seed yet in the barn yea as yet the vine and the fig tree and the pomegranate and the olive tree hath not brought forth, from this day I will bless you. 
And again, the word of the Lord came to Haggai in the four and twentieth day of the month, saying, now this is the um, ninth month here, Speak to Zerubbabel, governor of Judah, saying, I will shake the heavens and the earth. I will overthrow the throne of kingdoms. I will destroy the strength of kingdoms of the nations, or the heathen. I will overthrow the chariots and those that ride in them, and the horses and their riders shall come down, every one by the sword of his brother. We touched on that a little bit in the last study, uh, how God does that. He, is, he waves his hand, and you can just have this... Um, in certain armies or as wars where this disruption happened there every man sword was against his brother in this case the riders shall come down everyone by the sword of his brother <clears throat> which could be some type of infighting going on uh, however God does that it's just an incredible thing Haggai 2.23 in that day saith the Lord of hosts will I take thee O Zerubbabel my servant the son of Shetiel saith the Lord and will make thee as a signet a sign, for I have chosen thee, saith the Lord of hosts. Now Zechariah 1 opens with the eighth month of the second year of Darius. And the command to turn from your evil ways and evil doings. Now we covered that in a previous study in this series, the second year of Darius. Then uh, it jumps right into the eleventh month of the second year of Darius. It goes from the eighth month to the eleventh month. Um, which would be uh, January, February of 2013. Uh, th 2013. <clears throat> and Zechariah 2, as we follow this on, this progression, uh, Zechariah 1 opens with the eighth month and the command to turn from your evil ways and evil doings, the command to work and all that. Then it jumps right into the 11th month uh, in the second year of Darius. And we're following this progression of when God's saying certain things um, and commanding certain things. And Zechariah 2 has some great uh, promises of, of him being a wall of fire unto Jerusalem and his glory in the midst of them. And the command to deliver um, thyself from the daughter of Babylon, from the land of the north. So we see that also as, uh, you know, the, every time you see the daughter of Zion, the daughter of Babylon, it's it's God repeating history further on down toward the end of time. Um, and obviously, with the studies we've done in Revelation show that Babylon has fallen, Babylon has fallen, um, and has become a habitation of devils. When you, when you see that language related to the houses of God, then you know that the daughter of Babylon is related to that. And the command to deliver thyself from the daughter of Babylon from the land of the north, it's, all, it's like saying the invasion happened, uh, Satan has assaulted the houses of God, um, the, the churches, some of the churches have become habitations of devils. And there's, there's a one verse that might allow exception as Christ um, discussed this very important information in the book of Revelation <clears throat> that since you have kept my word I will keep you from the hour of trial which shall come upon the earth now I know a lot of people misuse this verse and I, I have to present a study on this because that same word keep since you have kept my word on earth I will keep you from the hour of trial now that doesn't mean the, that the church has mysteriously been raptured up. That means God's protection, His guarding, um, uh, with certain uh, houses of God. And I guess it would depend on if the house of God, um, any individual house of God, has gone after signs and lying wonders, or have um, done done what God for, uh, forbade uh, back in the Old Testament. So, you know, if there's one exception where, where God's um, mercy could be shown is if they've kept the Word, uh, the word of God. And I, I say that because that, those were Christ's words as he is addressing the seven churches. And the second, seven churches are a grand picture of all the churches uh, toward the end. So, having said that, 
Now this is a warning um, to th to the people which spoil or plunder God's elect. This is Zechariah 2.8. Again, we're, we're going th from the 8th month directly into the 11th month of the second year of Darius. And this is why I'm so interested in the book of Zechariah right now. I'm reading it very carefully. Zechariah 2.8. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, after the after the glory hath he sent me into the nations which spoiled you. For he that touches you, or touches you, touches the apple of his eye. For behold, I will shake my hand upon them, and they will be a spoil to their servants. And ye shall know that the Lord of the of that the Lord of hosts has sent me. Zechariah 2.10 Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, for lo, I come. There's that daughter of again. Uh, daughter of Zion, before it was um, delivering yourself from the daughter of Babylon. Sing and rejoice, O daughter of Zion, for lo, I come, and I will dwell in the midst of thee, saith the Lord. Zechariah 2.11 And many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day, and shall be my people, and I will dwell in the midst of thee, and thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto thee. And the Lord shall inherit Judah his portion in the Holy Land, and he shall choose Jerusalem again. Be silent, O all flesh, before the Lord, for he is raised up out of his holy habitation. Then we arrive in Zechariah 3, where we see Joshua the high priest was clothed with filthy garments in the presence of the angel of the Lord and also Satan standing at his right hand accusing him. However, this is where God rebukes Satan. Um, and we're going to read this. My printer has been running out of ink and it's some of, the, some of these words. I've got to, man, i got to get a new toner cartridge for that. So this is Zechariah 3, 1. And he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan, even the Lord that has chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not, is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Now you can see that whole activity, you know. He he's he's accusing Job at a certain point. Uh, if he desired to sift Peter like wheat, he's probably he's accusing Peter later. There's just this this uh, no other word to describe him as a clown. He's just a clown <laughs> um, who who just wants to destroy. Um, and this accusing that goes on continually uh, from the Old Testament to the New Testament. And especially at the end of time, where the activity of Satan is uh, brought to a new level of uh, attack. Now Joshua was, was, Joshua was clothed with filthy garments, and stood before the angel. And he answered and spake unto these that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine iniquity to pass from thee. And I will clothe thee with a change of raiment. And I said, Let them set a fair... It's headdress. I'm just going to say headdress. Let them set a fair headdress upon his head. So they set a fair headdress upon his head and clothed him with garments. And the angel of the, angel of the Lord stood by. And the angel of the Lord... Pro, now this word protested, It's that's kind of a an odd translation. An angel of the Lord declared unto Joshua, protested unto Joshua, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, If thou wilt walk in my ways, if thou wilt keep my charge, then shall also, I'm sorry, then thou shalt also judge my house, and, and shall also keep my courts, and I will give thee places to walk among these that stand by. Hear now, O Joshua the high priest, thou and thy fellows that sit before thee for they are men wondered at for behold I will bring forth my servant the branch for behold the stone that I have laid before Joshua upon one stone shall be seven eyes behold I will engrave the 
the graving thereof, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will remove I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, shall ye call every man his neighbor under the vine and the fig tree. Now here you have this illustration of Joshua's clothes uh, being dirty, filthy clothes, and then God placing clean garments in the headdress and commanding him to walk in his ways. Uh, and then you have the rebuking of Satan, who is the accuser. The Lord rebuke thee. I love that language because there's there's other places where um, he was disputing the body of Moses, and there again, the Lord rebuke thee. You know that was you have no say in it. So, and I think the reason um, I think I touched on this later. Yeah, I did. So I'll I'll cover that the body of Moses and, and the rebuking of Satan there because um, that's an important aspect of the end, and it's sort of just really meshing together right now um, with this study on Zechariah and Haggai. So God removes uh, iniquity in one day, and the stone of the seven eyes. They are the seven spirits going forth, as we learn in the book of Revelation. Uh, the stone in the hand, the the foundation. Uh, that Zerubbabel laid, uh, who's a represent representation of Christ himself, to finish the work of salvation. This is the time we're at. We're at the finishing of the house of God. And um, it's so great to see. Um, let me just read a little bit more in Zechariah, and then I'm going to conclude the study here. Who art, who art thou, O great mountain before Zerubbabel, Thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shouting, saying, Grace, grace unto it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel had laid the foundation of this house. His hand shall also finish it. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. For who has despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hands of Zerubbabel with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord, which run to and fro throughout the whole earth. Um, and again, in the book of Revelation, we, re we read and understand that the seven eyes represent the seven spirits of God. And this is a time of building the God's house. This is a time of great salvation. Then answered I and said unto him, What are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof? And I answered again and said unto him, what be these two olive branches which through the golden pipes empty the golden oil out of themselves? And he answered me and said, Knowest now I'm sorry, knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my lord. And he said, These are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Now this is very key. We've touched on this before. But the two anointed ones, I absolutely am convinced, represent the Word of God itself. And the two represents Moses, the law, who was given the law of God, and Elijah, the prophet, who represented the prophets of God, the law and the prophets, covering the whole spectrum of God's Word. Um, and now here we have Satan who's um, being rebuked because he was disputing the, the body of Moses. You know, why? Why was he doing that? When you have God's word being represented by two of God's prophets, two of his people, and you have the illustration of the Mount of Transfiguration, um, which relates to tabernacles, and when they, they saw Moses and Elijah standing, standing before them, that represented God's word, God's word in in power, in in glory, and remember the verse in the book of Revelation where it talks about um, the two witnesses laid dead in the streets, and then they're called to come up hither, and this is related to that because when you study that language of the two candlesticks and the two olive branches, it takes you it takes you right back into the book of Zechariah, where we've just read. Um, these are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Now, you have Elijah being taken up by a chariot of fire in the whirlwind. 
you have Moses, who Satan uh, disputed the body of Moses until he was told, the Lord rebuke thee. So you have the power of God's word standing in full force at one point in history, after a time that it lay dead in the street, and after a time that there, the bodies were not uh, being allowed to be buried. And then they were called to come up hither. When they come up hither, they stand again before the Lord of the earth. So, <laughs> why this is so important now is because you're look, we're looking at this language of Satan being uh, rebuked and his contention with the things that God does. Um, the, there's, there's no accu railing accusations, none of that. The Lord rebuke thee. You know, you as the accuser of, of the brethren has, has had your time. The Lord rebukes thee. So God allowed Satan to do so much, but then there's there's a point in time where God reverses things. And we're going to explore that a little bit more in another study. Um, in the book Countdown, I, I discussed how um, the northern is removed, uh, and he will, he will be removed. Um, this is very important language, and I, I don't want to get into too much of it right now because this will get too long. But um, he will be removed uh, because he did great things. And then at that point, when he, he is removed, God does great things. And we're told, fear not, O land, for God will do great things. And that has everything to do with this whole um, time after the 8,400 days and the time of the, the years of Darius as this building process happens. So we've talked about... Um, the uh, rebuking of Satan in, in two places and um, it's really important to see that this has happened uh, in the book of Zechariah within the second year of Darius and precisely it's, it's happened in, in the 11th month which lines up uh, in the start of 2013, which would be, you know, January, February, just the way the Hebrew months sort of um, are in the midsection of our months, so that two months could be split with one month lining up that way. So it's important to see this right now because this is encouraging language for every believer in Christ. Um, yet a little while, God shakes the heaven and the earth. That, that shaking the heaven and the earth has a lot to do with um, his avenging of his people. And it also has a lot to do with uh, the building process of salvation going forth um, in a great way worldwide. Um, man, I, that's exciting to me. I just, you know, after, after a time of studying these things in the past 10 years and looking closely at where we are in history what what's this this whole biblical uh, biblical calendar where we are in that calendar things are really meshing right now they're just fitting together really nicely um, and for years I had read the verse that talked about um, unto the coming of the Lord and then it says we're supposed to look at Job and we're supposed to look at Elijah well we're looking at we have looked at Job and Elijah not as much as Job, but Elijah definitely. And um, we saw that with Elijah, the, the whole judgment that comes, that he proclaimed, uh, for the, he prayed for it not to rain for three and a half years, and it did not rain, then he prayed again and it rained. Um, that whole three and a half years to me lines up with within three years, the glory of Moab will be contemned. Um, and then within one year the the glory of Kedar shall fail. That whole aspect of histor that historical account of uh, the Assyrian army coming against uh, where false worship was happening, that's what God does. Where there's false worship, He will bring the enemy um, as a judgment. And that's key to understand why Elijah is mentioned unto the coming of the Lord. And it's also key to understand why Job is mentioned as Satan um, you know also desired to sift uh, Job also I mean Peter was not the only one 
So you have these illustrations of the patience of Job um, enduring, enduring during this time. And um, until you get to that point where God, God blesses him doubly. So, <laughs> you know, those two, yeah, for years I didn't fully understand that process um, of looking at those two um, prophets of God and, and how that il they were both illustrations of what would happen in the, the final years of history. And uh, man, that's just very exciting. God does nothing by accident. He, he, allows, uh, he allowed Job to go through that, and he put him through that. And, you know, when you see the language in the book of Job, um, Job couldn't really say anything, even though he didn't deserve what happened to him. You know, God reinforced that with him. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Um, where were you when this was ha when this happened and this happened? Just God will use people in that way, put them through a trial. They come out stronger. They come out better. And God's word is lifted up. His word is is glorified. That is the strength and the power. In weakness, I am made strong. That's the strength of God's word. So. I hope this study has been helping. There's still a little bit more we have to touch on. And um, there's just, there's just, um, this is part four already, so there's probably going to be a couple more study on God shaking the heavens and the earth. And we're going to just continually following the, these months um, in the, of the second year of Darius and see how all, all of this pans out. But it's amazing these months are lining up. These months are lining up October. Then you have the December. Uh, from this day forward, I will bless you. Then you have the the language of uh, the January-February aspect of the 11th month. So I hope this study has helped. And, you know, keep studying this stuff. Um, you want to review Judges 5.1, 2 Samuel 22, um, Psalm 60. That's a good verse to look into. Um, Haggai 2 all of it and then look at the book of Zechariah start with chapter 1 and look at the progression of um, the months of Darius how it jumps from uh, like the 9th to the 11th or is it the 8th to 11th no oh, I can't remember now I just got through reading and I should remember but so the chapters um, Zechariah Chapter one, chapter two, and chapter three, and uh, and four, where God says grace, grace unto it, and this rebuilding, you know, starts to happen, and this this time of great salvation, time to work, um, and bring this message to the world. Okay, so that's it for now. Um, there's going to be some Christmas music coming. I don't know what now. <laughs> I haven't recorded it yet. Um, I am looking for songs to to record. So. This is always a great time of year because I love Christmas music. I love re redoing them and, uh, in any way. It's just a little bit different. But anyway, my name is Marty Cattuzzo. Um The email address is 2011studies at gmail.com. And uh, thank you for listening. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.